All right, ladies and gents, welcome to the final set of the day. And this, whoever wins this series will move in to the Hidden Cup 5 main event. There is a very interesting storyline with this one, though. Because for Sebastian, he is the favorite, but he's a player who wants to be in that top 16. A player who's come close to making to that top 16. Many people would say that he is maybe top 16, but he's not established, right? He's not established like the guys who are more experienced and have been around the block and are already sitting in the main event. Sebastian is uh, 22. He's young, he's aggressive, he's immensely talented, and uh, it feels like it is his time. On the other side, we have Baba Oram, a player who is not new. He has been on and off throughout the scene playing, and funnily enough, his best tournament performance was actually three years ago, and he won a tournament which used the Hidden Cup for settings. It was just called Visible Cup, and it was for players that weren't in the main event of Hidden Cup. Didn't see much from the guy in tournaments. I barely see him in ranked. From what I know, he's over the age of 30. He's an engineer. Uh, all the French players I've talked to is like, this guy doesn't care, really. I mean, he does care, but like, this isn't his thing. This isn't his dream. He's working a job. He's playing the game for fun. And he beat Nikov. Uh, one of the few, like, full-time age players we have who's, who's, like, a crazy talented player. He beat Nikov in round two. In round three, he beat Kingston, a player who, like Sebastian, is on the younger side and has had some really good performances. So, Baba is is a player that people have been freaking out about and are really excited about, and here he is. And he's one series win away from being in the top 16 and being one of the main event players <clears throat> in um, Hidden Cup. This is really weird, though. This is the third time we have seen Tatars against Incas on Arabia to start a series. Vinchester Mihai, we saw that. And then also, me, uh, it was also Sobek against Sato. And actually, Tatars won both times. It is interesting. Obviously, they're picking sieves and planning things out, but it is a rather specific matchup. Because I wouldn't consider either... Well, Incas I consider top tier. I think Tatars I consider uh, a, a bit below that. But I think what it is, like Sebastian, he's the type of player who's going to win on Arabia. So he drafts very highly for that and values the Incas. And then I think uh, Baba said, well, Tatars are solid enough. But they do have some potential weaknesses. It's good enough for me to get a win. And I'm going to save my sieves for elsewhere. But yeah, I hope that introduction is exciting for you guys because um, I think it's really good for the scene to have different players advancing and having there be upsets. And I also feel like the... I think what's unique to our scene is the just the age difference, right? Like Baba Rum, 33 or something, and Sebastian, 22. And, you know, there's clearly... And this is part of the reason I love Hidden Cup main events so much, too. There's just difference in styles. Some players are more strategic. Some players are a bit faster and nerdier with the micro. I don't know. It just, it all adds together, flows together, and gets exciting for me. A couple sheep were left behind by Sebastian. As he's gone forward early, he wants to find Baba Raman. This is precisely what you would expect from a player who wants early control and wants to show Baba Ram what's up here. Sebastian is going to have three Militia in the Dark Age. So it's rare these days to see three Militia in Dark Age. Normally, players will click up before they do that. And oh, Baba Ram! Baba Run! Okay, saves the scout, but that is really hurts him. That scout will not be useful at all for anything but scouting intel. So he ran right into the TC, and guys, he has no clue that three militia are coming forward with this eagle. This could be devastating. It was already going to be bad because of the scout, but now with the three militia and the eagle here, if he can't quick wall fast enough, if he doesn't realize this, he's going to have to abandon everything. Abandoning everything is actually fine. He's got tons of food underneath the TC. He can get wood elsewhere, but he has to realize right away. And now now we get to see what's, what's his uh, confidence like in these situations. Because the best players actually won't run. They just sit here and they box. For anyone new, they don't actually box in the game. It's a mod. Don't be confused. Okay. Let's see. So he's like, he gives it no respect. See, I, I can't do this. Right? A lot of players would just back away. But he says, nope, sorry. The ping is low enough for me. I can micro this. I'm fine. 
And we'll see if he's going to be fine because these could be upgraded later and one misstep, he loses a villager. But so far, the militia and the eagle have actually pretty much not done... They've done nothing. Villagers are always ready. It's smart. You pull four vills to one area and then you just go for the four villagers from the bush. And, uh, like, if you split them up, obviously it's a problem, but you just do four vills on one bush so you can fight back instantly. Okay, so there's the stable now for Baba Ram. We knew this was going to happen with all this food with the Tatars that he's going to go scout. His starting scout is weak. So that hurts. If this scout didn't hit the TC, we'd have some major problems here. Could be follow-up militia from Sebastian. He's not on gold just yet, though. Sebastian should know that eventually this army's going to be pretty weak for him. And behind this, he's quite a bit on wood. You're, the expectation is an archer range. I think we'll see a spear or two into archers for him. But so far, impressed with how Baba's been able to deal with that. Again, it just showed some confidence there. I just cannot get over the fact he beat Nikov, he beat Kingston. But, like, a lot of these maps, he had also done so well in Visible Cup three years ago. So, such an interesting thing. This guy does not play the game that much. In fact, I, I wouldn't... If you would have asked me before the qualifier... Well, it's a very specific thing to ask, but if you were to say, is Baba Rum going to sign up? I'm like, I, I probably would have said, I don't think he's playing. Like, I don't think he's playing much. Just maybe when he has more time throughout his day... Or throughout his life, whatever's happening, he'll play, but he is not on the grind like everybody else is. Scouts, they're going to run through here. Okay. Sebastian hoping to get walls down. Does have the spearmen. And Sebastian's just going to sit on this house for now. No archer range. No, excuse me. Does have the archer range, and archer needs to get forward there. Sebastian actually bringing this spearman back because he knows this move with the archer is a little bit risky. And they'll probably meet up and get to the house to keep applying pressure there. More Spearman from Sebastian. Great defense from him so far. Baba hasn't taken any additional hits, though. And this is where this level of defense gets a bit tricky for you. Because you cannot repair that house anymore. This archer can now kill that villager slowly. And having been on the other end of it, Sebastian loves to do this type of thing. And it just slowly snowballs on you. And skirmishers are going to be needed. Villager needs to be pulled away. And replaced with another villager. And there you go. Scouts still moving forward. Six scouts here for the Frenchman. And skirms are going to be on the way. But he needs to do the same thing he just did. He needs to pull this villager away again. He pulls the villager away again. Really good stuff. And then if you ever do that. Then this spearman's going to go after you. Because of Sebastian's micro. Wow. Sebastian's going to have the walls down too. Crazy stuff. But really nice defense here from Baba Ram as well. Look at how many sheep he still has because of the Tatars. Really sick. Wow, these guys are so good. No real miss plays, right? Very easy for a villager to go down, a scout to go down. Here, like the archer. How fast does Sebastian react? Mm, actually, I don't know if this fight is good for Baba. It's a great fight. I, I'm kidding. It's an amazing fight. <laughs> the spearman got cleared. And 6-1 on the KD. Wow. There's just so much army out here from Sebastian. He thought he was going to find the value from it. And Baba's going to take this fight. And, and this should be better value for Sebastian just because he killed those three scouts. Okay, I think this is time to clear the air. Okay? So, here's what happened. So, when I was casting Baba, I think in round two, I knew he was from Asterisk. And I thought I was going to get credit for that. I thought people were going to be like, wow, an American knows asterisk. Because, like, if I mention, uh, you know, Premier League or La Liga or any type of, like, football, right? People are immediately like, uh, whoa, American knows ball kick. You know, people are very judgmental, all right? Because of where I'm from. So I thought I was going to get credit for even knowing it. And you guys didn't really give me... Uh, okay, now I mispronounced it, but it was unintentional. Calm down. Okay, so I didn't... I, let me finish my thought, chat. Let me finish my thought, okay? So, I thought I was going to get credit. And some people gave me credit. 
And then I made the mistake of saying it was somewhat niche. And a lot of people were like, whoa, 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 whoa. It's not niche. Okay? And I thought it was. Because I, I did my research. As an American, very niche. Okay? Not well known here. So again, I was hoping for some credit. Looked it up. Looked at some numbers. Very much not niche. Okay? So I apologize for using the word niche about your, your favorite comic. Okay? Anyways. Um, so I, I just wanted to clear the air here, game one. Villager finally goes down. Could be another villager who goes down here, actually. And, well, it's not too bad. One villager down and Castle Age for Baba. Who, uh, I, he may have based his name on the actual French dessert. Because he had another name he would play on called Tartopum. I'm not sure if you guys can tell me what Tartopum is, but... Tartopum, I was told, was another dessert. And, uh, wow, I mean, still some weak villagers here. He has to abandon the woodline, but he has defended. So far, he will have a much better Castle Age time than Sebastian. Sebastian is considered the favorite here, and also the better Arabia player. Okay, apple pie, cool. All right, good to know. I actually need to tell my dad that there's a player based on that comic, because he's the one who had it in my house growing up. But it was all in French. Um... I imagine they probably sell English versions, but we never had them. Man, there, there's a lot of weak vills around here, and it, it could all turn around really quick. <laughs> there's no upgrades on these skirms, so they can't hit the archers. And Sebastian's like, dude, get your upgrades, or I'm just going to nerd out behind here. All right, good to know, guys. Good to know. But anyways, I wanted to, I wanted to apologize. I was incorrect. I do still, my comparison was, so here in the States, Calvin and Hobbes isn't near as popular as some other comics. And Calvin and Hobbes is the greatest comic of all time, in my opinion. It's my favorite. And uh, so I, I thought Calvin and Hobbes was niche, but upon my research, I think that Calvin and Hobbes is more niche than, than uh, Asterisk is. Asterix. Sorry. But yeah, watch. Uh, don't watch Calvin and Hobbes. Sorry, read Calvin and Hobbes if you get the chance. Maybe it's just nostalgia for me. There is a wolf chasing the spearman. I will keep you updated. We may have a kill from Gaia here. Faster castle age from Baba. Very impressive. He didn't use the market for that time either. And he will go step lancer. He will go knight. He's hoping these skirms can find kills on the archers. But Sebastian backs away. And Sebastian's going to have a big ball of crossbow, which isn't awkward to use anymore because of the patch the devs gave us for the qualifier and the main event. The units are not regrouping horribly. And still, we'll keep you updated. Wolf is very hungry. I think needs three more hits. Ooh, it depends on if there's a hill involved or not, actually. Downhill hit, downhill hit, downhill hit. Nice micro. You move, here go the archers. Now, Sebastian's always been a really good archer player, so he will be really happy about that patch that we're using. And eagles in front can kind of be helpful, but it is pretty much just the crossbows there. And this spearman is going to... die! And then over here, we've got the attack from Baba. But he's never going to break through here. Nice job from Sebastian to drop the houses. And now a big attack from Sebastian, and he just camps right next to this town center here from Baba. But we already have Siege from Baba Ram. So I, li I like how Baba's played this. Like, I think the Incas, their units are so cheap, their economy is so good. They should always have the lead in this game. I think Incas are... I actually think Incas will be nerfed after Hidden Cup at some point. I don't know what the devs' priorities are, but I think they're at that level of strength. Attack rounds, maybe? On the Eagles? In front? Boom! Nice attack round. The Tatars, I've always felt like, are in a pretty solid spot balance-wise. They're not too strong. They're not too weak. Which basically means, you know, like, 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 balanced. And, you know, some of the other civs seem to have some crazy peaks to them right now. But it is a good point. The Incas have lost this matchup twice. So, who, who knows? Like, maybe the data suggests the Incas are not actually as good as I feel and other people seem to th feel and 
pretty sure every player in this event will agree with my statement on the, the way the matchup plays out. The three town centers for Baba Ram. I mean, guys, it was not a fluke, the level that he brought in the earlier rounds, and he is playing super clean. Immediate three TCs. Onto the sheep very nicely, using the Tatar bonus. Has knights, has siege, defended from the crossbow timing, which is normally very strong. But now we're going to have... Oh, man, we're going to have redemption monks. This is incredibly early from Sebastian. I do not know why it is Tatars against Incas so many times so far in the deciders. I'm I, I, My explanation before was... Incas are seen as really top tier, so the players who are favored on Arabia will go for that. And then Tatars are kind of solid, but they're not insane. So the other players will try and go for them to hope to get a win and save some of their other sits for elsewhere. We've got Knights to get through. Look at the damage control from Sebastian. He actually, this could have been worse for him, but he housewalled everything here. He also killed two Knights on the front there. Possible those were actually deleted if Baba Ram thought they were going to be converted. And then he doesn't know that Redemption's in, and Redemption gets the conversion immediately. So the Knights are kind of trapped in here for Baba. There will certainly be more Monks and Crossbows from Sebastian to deal with this. And now, how do you stop this push? Seems brutal. Another Knight has to get deleted because of these Monks. We might actually see a Stable get converted here. Zolato Warrior Hype? Knight almost gets converted. Here we had two conversions. This is insane play from Sebastian. Look at the resources collected. Look at the idle TC time for Sebastian. The KD doesn't even tell the whole story because of the conversions he's gotten. This kid's insane, man. I know that people want to root for the underdog and the crazy storyline of Baba Rum here, but Sebastian is the favorite for a reason, and he is just smothering his opponent with pressure right now. The thing about Sebastian, guys, is that he used to be wildly aggressive, and he didn't have the economy behind it. Um, he used to play under another name called Su Call Me Subutai, he used to play as, two or three years ago. In fact, if you look at some of my YouTube uploads, you will see Call Me Subutai in some games. He changed his name maybe two years ago to Sebastian, and um, he's, he's just improved massively every year. I have to say, man, this monk and the other monk, kind of unfortunate not to get more conversions. But heavy on stone here is Baba as he's trying to hold on. I mean, maybe he can drop a castle somewhere. This feels really tough. Look at his eco, right? His eco is flying behind this as well, which is really what the best players do. Big shot is needed here, and a really important castle for Baba Ram. You might actually see Sebastian go for a forward castle. A knight he converted earlier is still around. A knight he converted earlier is going back here, too. Stable could be converted. These other monks are going for conversions. How are you supposed to be able to defend from this? This is so much all the time. The siege gets converted again. Knights need to be dealt with. The stable is still being converted. The stable's converted. Is he going to make one? The Incas cannot build stables. But if you convert one, you can make a Zalata warrior, which is a little bit like an Easter egg. And he's making them. He wants knights for the siege. Zalatos are on the way. Also, in some ways, I think it sends a message to your opponent. Right? If you're getting Zalatos, you're not feeling too good about things. And more conversions happen for Sebastian. He backs away. And here is our first Zalata warrior. In the Hidden Cup qualifiers, maybe the only Zalata Warrior. Look at them. By the way, they're awful. They're they're really bad. You can't get armor. You can't get bloodlines. So it's really not the best. Oh, don't castle his stable. Okay, well, Baba Rum's... He's going to get rid of this stable here. But they are beautiful. Yeah, they are beautiful. And it is a raiding tool that right now Sebastian really needs. And you might be wondering, T90, what do you do against this pressure? Well, Elite Skirm would have been really helpful. There were Skirms for Baba Ram, but he lost them. I think, like, because everything's so smooth for the Incas, it's really hard to stop them from getting to, to the Eagles as well, then. I think Sebastian has played this game near perfect for Arabia. And the Eco's been good for Baba Ram, but he has not been able to find engagements. The Redemption choice... 
was so good. Everything came in so early for Sebastian. Tatarzalotl? Oh, that would have been interesting. Is it the rarest unit in AoE2 regular play? I think these are more common than war elephants for the Persians. <laughs> I, I think I have seen, in 1v1s, I think I have seen more Zolata Warriors than War Elephants for the Persians. <laughs> it, it happens more frequently just because the elephants are so expensive. Siege Tower? Nah, Siege Tower is fairly common. Throwing Axemen happens. Flaming Camels still happens. That's a good, that's a, that's a good point though. Maybe it is really rare. So right now, you're just kind of hoping if you're Baba Rum that... This aggression from Sebastian, oof, big shot, is all very all in. And that there's not a an amazing eco setup on the back of this. But unfortunately, as Sebastian splits away from the TC fire, the eco setup for Sebastian is absolutely unreal. Sebastian has a castle at a position for Trebs. Sebastian even has more crossbows over here. And... This, this patch, which has brought back crossbow play and just, you know, units not regrouping in general, has led to Sebastian's micro and army control that just look perfect here. He's played the perfect game to start off the series, and the GG's called. Babaram has no fight in him there, and this is completely over at this point. We were going to see a big eagle switch, a big treb push. Babaram was not really able to field much military there at that point. I mean, Redemption Monks... It's, it's not uncommon, but the timing in which Sebastian did that was, was just crazy to me because he had so many crossbows and then he also got redemption. It was those two monks that moved forward and then it, the rest really fell apart there. I do think though, in terms of peak potential, Baba Ram recognizes the strength of the Incas and I think that he will feel as though Arabia is going to be the toughest map for him against a player like Sebastian. So when you draft, you're just not valuing this map as heavily. And that is the silver lining here, that on some level, this was never even part of the plans. Like, look at where these... Well, actually, Tatars were picked pretty high, pretty much on par, I guess, with the Incas. So maybe that's really good for Sebastian, but it wasn't like a high priority pick for him at all. Incas maybe being left too late in the draft too, man. I mean, we'll see. We'll see what the Civ data says. The Civ data has been really interesting so far for the qualifier. Now, very interesting here. Um, we have game two, and, and again, I just pointed out that this must show that Baba Rum's confidence because that was pretty much a, a stomp in game number one. And uh, where's this? Where's Sebastian's scout? Oh, it's over here. For I'm sorry, guys. I'm losing. It's been a long day. I thought that his scout didn't spawn. <laughs> uh, okay, let me complete my point. So, um... Anyways, you know, with how the first game went, I personally would be feeling very uh, bad. I, I would feel completely overwhelmed. But there was the Civ matchup, which again, I felt a certain way about. And then also, Baba Rum, he's now gone for the Khmer, which is a Civ that he's played insanely well on with this map. We saw Tato play the uh, Khmer on this map earlier, but Baba Rum played Khmer against Nikov, and he also played Khmer against Kingston. I think he lost his game against Nikov, but he did win against Kingston. Now, what he did was he wanted Knight Crossbow in the mid game. Knight Crossbow combination and a crazy economy. And we saw that from Tata too, how the economy can just fly. But for now, Baba's going to push in some deer, bring in his boar pretty early. But we've got the Spanish on the other side. Guys, we haven't seen Spanish that frequently. What are your thoughts on Spanish here? Um, the crossbow timing is not an option for Sebastian anymore. So that is going to be rather one dimensional then because I think Spanish are one of two civs that don't get crossbow. I think Bulgarians are the other one. Conquistadors are going to be tricky to get to because the map is pretty open. So that's probably not an early option. So I'm guessing Sebastian will probably play into scouts. Maybe this just becomes like knights and monks and pikes. Could always go for cav archers maybe maybe skirmishers i mean late game spanish is fantastic it's just a little bit more of a unique pick here hmm. 
Yeah, I don't think you can go for the castle drop right away, but I think if it's an even game and you're booming and... Like I said, you can go knights and pikes and still feel really smooth with the Spanish. I think eventually a castle through the middle is a big deal. So, map, fairly open for both. I think it's a bit more wallable right here for Sebastian on the front, which will suit him. I think Baba's front area is more exposed. But he's going to go to the side. He's going to take these resources here, apparently, with a mill. Which is, again, what Tato did. And because the Khmer villagers can hop inside of houses, this is a risk that I think you should take. And you almost have to take. You know, you want to take advantage of every bonus you can. Hmm. We'll see how it goes. Uh, Sigs, we're not doing player point of view for Hidden Cup main event for a couple obvious reasons. Okay, so first off, if you're seeing player's point of view, you're, you're getting to see, like, their speed from something that is not just overviewing the game, right? Uh, the second part is the technical aspect, which is not so easy. The third part is the mods. Some people have pine trees. Some people have regular trees. Some people, like, Yo's got these monks rolling on carts, bringing in the relics. Yo's got... I'm not even kidding. I think Yo has like 60 in-game graphic mods, right? Some people have squares. Like, yeah, so like doing player point of view for Hidden Cup would be horrible for many different reasons. You'd be able to find out right away. <laughs> so, yeah, Yo is the polar bear knight mod. That's true. He is the polar bear knights. His knights are actually polar bears on, uh, wait, no, it's a, I think it's a penguin on a polar bear, a knight on a polar bear. I forget. Yeah, so that... We're not doing that. <laughs> also, in the main event, this tab will be gone. This will not be available. There will be none of this. If we will only watch the game. We'll have more data, actually, to work off of, which is really fun. But we won't have a number to look at, which we could compare to, you know, numbers that exist that says, you know, what someone's speed is. I, I would much prefer to be able to try and speculate based on the games that we see. So... Baba Rum is scouting his opponent now. We'll see the barracks. And yeah, this is... I think Baba Rum will know this has to be scouts from Sebastian because Spanish really don't want to be going archers. And then Sebastian would expect scouts because Khmer are almost always doing this. And Sebastian, he did actually scout over here, but I don't know if he saw anything, guys. Hmm. I mean, if you look, you can see the deer are moving. But that's, that's definitely notable. I expect a lot of scout aggression here. And let's see if Babaram can tie it up. What a day it's been, guys. But yeah, good good question. Um, if you've never watched a Hidden Cup before, I could see why that would be something you'd want to know. <laughs> Wait, Polar Bear Knights are a reason against player point of view? <laughs> well, it would spoil it. It would spoil it. It is funny. I just... There's certain mods that players use that I just think are just... I could never use for a competitive game. I find Yo to be so interesting with that because he's such a he's such a good player and he has all these funny little mods that you wouldn't associate with a competitive player. I really like random bands, more Civ variety that way. Yeah, but I didn't like that players would train all week to go for a strategy and then the random bands eliminate their strategy. I think that's really bad for for prepped maps and prepped plans. I get that random bands add a little bit more variety, and we will have a different uh, drafting format for the main event. But random bands have a big downside when it comes to, to player strategy. And that was really close there for Baba Ram. Very close. That could have been bad for him. But let's see how he gets himself out of this one. Because Tato earlier had four vills, and Hart was all over him with spears and scouts. And Tato was able to make it happen. But Sebastian is going to make life difficult. And you can tell Baba's like, okay, I'm out of here. And there he goes. He's running. And he's, well, uh, it's going to be close into the house. Hurry up, people. Whoop, there we go. No, oh, oh, God. Okay, that, that was close. This is why he rushed these uh, walls down, right? Actually, there is a hole here, which he hasn't checked. That could be horrible. Because he is full walled to the other side. And here he goes with his scouts now. And Spanish do build faster. And whoop. There we go. Baba Rum in. 
Now it's time for Sebastian to damage control. He does have a Spearman here, though. And scouts are regretting their decision, so they're now going to leave. Does feel like Sebastian is just coming home with his army, and we will transition towards the next stage. Arming Ika for Sebastian looks really nice. Walls are looking good. Gold and stones on the back. I mean, if you wanted to go conks, guys, you could actually try it with that stone back there. It feels like an archer switch could be natural for Baba Rum here with his scouts. Again, he went knight, crossbow, and the other sets. He always had crossbow with knights, but it was the timing. So, like, he has a decision to make right now, and if he starts to go to gold and add the range now, he may choose to not do that at all. I think it would feel very natural to do it, though. I also think walling towards the TC is something a lot of old-fashioned players used to do, and then they stopped doing it because TCs don't hit much. There's only two scouts for Sebastian, but Sebastian could still run through there. I just point that out because Bob has been around a while. I feel like he he would have the tendency to do this. But um, the last couple years, players have just never done this because it's just too risky. So here come... I mean, again, if that's four scouts, they'll run through. Will the two scouts go through? Yes, they do. And the two spearmen are going to be here as well. And there's a weak villager there, Baba! This is, this is unnecessarily awkward, but nice quick wall from him. And now he's got Sebastian, who has nothing better to do, in his base, ready to nerd out and kill the villager. <laughs> Let me tell you, it's not fun. <laughs> I've been on the other end of this too many times. In so many different ways. Now, any hit he gets on the TCs... Uh, or, or, sorry, not on the TCs, on the Spears. It's nice because he can just use the Scouts eventually. So, this is a really nice situation, actually. But, the Villager goes down. And, yeah, it just, it is an unnecessary loss here. And he will probably feel that as well. Sebastian's probably like, wow. That's sick. Thank you. There's been no Archer switch, right? Nothing out here to deal with the Spears. Nothing to push forward with early. And I am seeing Stone come in right now for Sebastian. Sebastian's going to try Scouts into Conquistadors? We have never seen Spanish played on this map yet. Um, I would need someone to verify that maybe if there was maybe an early round I missed. This is the first time we've seen Spanish on Slopes. This is going to be the first time we've then seen Spanish into Conquistadors on Slopes. But it actually is just like the, the smoothest build here for Sebastian to do this. I think Baba choosing not to go Archer. No way. Oh, a doink from Sebastian. Sebastian found the weak build from earlier. <laughs> Guys, okay. This is why you must wall in front of your TC against a player like Sebastian. He will still look for value for the next 10 minutes. Like, this army is always going to be microed. Two villagers killed. But Baba Ram did get one. So two to one in that regard. Vil count's still pretty even as well because Sebastian had a little bit more idle TC time. Two stable knights. Okay, so I think Baba Rum is not expecting stone income at all from Sebastian here. Because if I expected conquistadors, I would want to have maybe an archer range and some range units on the field. But from what I'm seeing here. As Baba Ram is a little worried about this and goes out to wall. And Sebastian's going to find another one. Three villagers killed from this tiny little army. Crazy value from him. But, but yeah, I just don't know if he's expecting the Conquistador play. wonder if Sebastian will go for a town center first or if he goes for the castle right away. Castle right away. I love it. And Conquistador is really solid against knights. And that's precisely what we're going to end up seeing here. Villagers escape for Baba Rum. Who wants to keep this dream alive. Uh, we'll hopefully soon have the wood to build the TC here. Just waiting for the wood to drop off and he'll drop the TC there. That's the spot he'll want to be at if the Conquistadors are coming through the middle. He does not know his opponent is going for a castle. Hmm. Sebastian has played really safe here. He's played really smart. Conquistadors now will be masked. And some monks could be out as well to convert any knights. 
There's the castle. Baba Rum will see that. And I honestly think at this point, he's probably like, <gasps> and he's completely surprised by it. Sebastian checks the TC. Nice, nice stuff. I love that. So he knows there's a TC there now. And now he has to mass those conquistadors. Now, I have been asked, if I had a dollar for every time someone asked me, T90, how do you kill conquistador throughout my career? I would be on par with Elon Musk's net worth prior to him buying Twitter from whatever, you know, crap. I don't even know what's true. Anyways, I, I would have be very wealthy man, okay? Because everyone has asked me at least 17,000 times, how do you beat the conquistadors? And the answer with a lot of gunpowder units is you have to stop them from getting there, right? You have to get ahead before they get there, which is like the most non-answer ever. It, it sucks. It's like, well, that didn't help me at all, right? But no, it's true. You have to recognize that threat is there. And that's the, really the number one thing. And so with the stone being scouted on the back, I don't think Baba expected it. And now the conquistadors are here, and it is very unhelpful for me to suggest, well, just do better next time. So what you do here is you go elite skirm. So we've got to have uh, ranges going up at home for Baba. Skirm's upgrades are going to be coming in. But these conquistadors do so much damage. They are so good, and they are just killing everything. Oh, man. And this is why when I saw the double stable knights, and I knew it was conquistador... That's why I was a little concerned here for Balbara. The other thing you have to remember when you're up against a unique unit is that you likely have the economy lead because they had to build the castle. But honestly, so impressive from Sebastian because he will be on three TCs soon. So it's not like his eco is struggling and he kills that monk and he's just always moving forward. That's the thing with Sebastian, guys. Remember what he did in Feudal Age in the previous game? Remember how he played in Castle. It's just constant aggression. He is so good. It wouldn't surprise me, like, if Sebastian makes it to the main event, if people look at, like, if the votes come in and people see uh, big names like Viper, Hera, Vinchester, when it's really Sebastian, when the big reveal comes. Depending on his level, of course, and how deep he gets into the tourney, if he makes it. But yeah, the problem with, with Skirmishers is they still get shredded very quickly by the conks. They do bonus damage, but the conks still kill them. Because conquistadors have do so much damage. And I, I'm looking for positives right now for Baba Rum, and I'm just not seeing many of them. He's just getting slaughtered here. It's not good. He's losing farmers now. His eco is all out of whack compared to Sebastian's. And Sebastian who has, like, just dominated everyone in this qualifier, is ready to to kind of ruin this storyline. Do you see that micro? <laughs> Look at that! Sebastian, stop it! Thank you. Make us feel human. Thank you. Three town centers for Sebastian. He's banking up stone for another castle. And he's getting bloodlines now to add even more HP onto these conquistadors. Back to this side he goes, finds more villagers, and it's a slaughter. And these villagers are also dying with food in their hands. So you don't even get the reward from them being out there. Brutal. Now, Sebastian did fail to qualify for NAC. In a game he was winning when he went for a very forward castle against ACCM. It got denied. Many people were saying this is now called a Sebastian castle, not a doubt castle. I think it's more of a how many times do you do this situation. Doubt has failed castles um, way more than Sebastian has. And Sebastian is not going to fail this one. There's Yeah, this castle goes up, dude. This is what a statement. You go up 2-0 and you do it in this fashion? This would be crazy. He sees another monk. He saw the relic was picked up. He goes for another kill. Boom. Dead. Split microing, killing the skirms. This is supposed to be a counter unit. Boom, dead. All the skirms are dead. Castle's on the way up. Spanish build speed, by the way. That castle is on more stone, which can lead to even more castles. And then everything from Baba Rum will go down. And it is a complete and utter slaughter right there, as the monk doesn't even get the conversion. We've got 
the GG called. It has not been that close. Sebastian looks amazing. And Baba Ram is going to have to find a way to beat this kid. And again, I don't think Slopes is going to be it. I think he has to, to get some momentum, I think he has to get some water involved. And I think maybe Islands should be his choice next from his home map list. But listen, there's a, this is just a complete misread from Baba. I think we get very used to there not being misreads. But it's Spanish. He actually scouted the stone. Right? So he knew the stone was on the back. I think in a full wall scout war, you have to recognize that it's going to be conks. And at this stage of the game, you add the archery range and you start to add some archers. Because if you have archers, even if the archers don't break through, the castle never goes up on the front. It's more defensive. Right? You're already massing range units, which can help you combine some crossbows with some skirms. I think the double stable edition, which came a little bit later on, this is something he's used to doing. Because he did it in the other games, but he wasn't expecting conquistadors. Not to mention that Sebastian also killed three villagers with the feudal age army there. But so far, man, this has been a stomp, and Sebastian is looking amazing. You can see some of the speed there, and he has the ability to kill, but he has the ability to boom. And there's a reason the hype is real for him: more food, more gold, more stone. Beautiful stuff. All right, ladies and gents, welcome to game number three. We've got Baba Ram, and it has not looked great so far for him. But many people here still believe. Uh, we've got Malians, which is a top-tier Civ for this map. And we have the Persians then for Sebastian, which is another top-tier Civ for this map. And I freaking love this map. And this exact matchup, Babarun has played before. He played this matchup as the Malians against the Persians in his game number five in the second round when he shocked the world and beat Nikov. Okay? So he has been there before. However... I am going to have to bring up some tendencies here because when that Nika Baba Rum game, and man, it really makes me excited if you guys actually watch that series right now and you're remembering this because I always wonder what percentage of people actually know what I'm talking about. Anyways, if you do, thank you. Um, that game was a very passive game on the land. What we saw in that game was a lot of walling, a lot of safe play into Castle Age. It was very boomy. It went towards the late game. We had camels and knights and monks. Um, but in Feudal Age, it wasn't very open. It, it wasn't very aggressive. Sebastian, and it's even annoying me just bringing it up. We've seen it already. He has this crazy tendency, and he loves to keep it open on land. So I think, just right off the bat here, I think that Sebastian's game plan should be to maybe go for some militia of some kind with his starting scout. And just try and make life awkward for Baba Rum before Baba Rum can maybe get some walls down. Because you have to think Sebastian watched the Rex. This is the biggest moment of his career if he makes it into Hidden Cup. So you would expect that he would have watched those games, seen Baba Rum's tendencies, and then come out firing. As for Baba, though, I mean, his Civ is really flexible. Malians can afford so much with the cheaper buildings, so you could always play in towards uh, Archers. Or scouts to maybe defend from that and stabilize. All right, so I've said many times, pushing deer on this map is a bit of a risk. We've got Babaram taking that risk. He may feel he needs a little bit of extra something. He's going to fish the west side. Sebastian, not pushing any deer. And look at his scouting, guys. Look at the difference. Can we just look at the Fog of War for a second? Zoom out, Fog of War, Babaram. He's got his nice little circle pushing some deer. Then we look at Sebastian, wanting information, scouting the pawns, even using a turkey here. So he knows his opponent isn't docked here. He knows his opponent isn't docked here, and he will find his opponent's dock already. This is much faster than normal. Okay, it's a goose. Sorry, but... um, Yeah, and, and that is a big part of the strategy on this map. And what that might mean, if he's scouting it that early, actually, he's missed it. He might, he might be very confused, actually. Yeah, he's, he's like, huh? <laughs> um, yeah, it might mean that he chooses to sneak a vill to try and dock that. And that was something that we saw from uh, Nikov against Babaram, I believe, if I remember that game correctly. A winner here is in the main event of Hidden Cup, guys, which is February 25th through March 3rd. I do want to remind people, as people come in and out all day, we have a live viewing party in the USA. First time it's ever happened. 
March 3rd, beautiful Fort Lauderdale, Florida. For anyone who's who's thinking about that, we have the tickets and the Discord server where you can get more information and questions. It's pinned in the comments, uh, at the top of the comment section here on Twitch. You'll see third place match. You will see the final, uh, the big reveal, and then I will be there as well. Obviously, other age fans will be there. Lots of cool things planned. Uh, just check it out as tickets will only be on sale for, for a bit longer, so... Hmm. So no barracks for Sebastian. That's what I was expecting. Will we see a sneak vill? Normally you're going to see a villager just make a run for it to try and dock here. Persian docks are really strong. Doesn't seem like we're going to see a sneak vill. Still thoroughly scouting with the goose. Checking to see if Babaram is going to build a barracks here. Double checking the front of the base. He doesn't find anything. Baba Rum has found the dock from Sebastian and is bringing a vill. This is what the people of France wanted to see. This villager here. And, ooh, interesting. Wow, heavy pond play. This is rare. You don't normally see a, like, two docks going up in separate ponds. If anything, you're going to see two docks to kill your opponent's fish. But he's hoping to fish here. And then also aggro here. And then, of course, he'll have to hope not to die on land. Don't tell me this goose is going to be lost here. And this is going to give Sebastian an idea. Don't tell me. He double-checked with his fishing ship to see if there's a dock there. The goose is moved. The villager is there. The dock is going up. Silly goose! What are you doing? That's so interesting. And also, Baba's scout is being attacked. He's taking the scout away from the uh, from the from the shoreline. Will Sebastian double check here? If Sebastian doesn't double check, this could be amazing. There's going to be scouts for Sebastian, which Baba Rum also gets to see. I think Sebastian is checking again. Just to be sure, and he sees it. Okay, I mean, it's good he checked, guys, but Sebastian is not on gold. So if he's not on gold, he can't make many fire galleys, and there's already a fire galley on the way here for Baba. Now, there's also a fishing ship here for Baba, but you don't have a way of knowing if your opponent's on this pond, and Sebastian's going to come in. He is immediately making a fire galley, though, so that's going to work out really well. Wow, guys, look at the scout. We'll now check this. If you don't see a dock here, you might assume that Sebastian is coming here, which is why the Fire Galleys is coming. I love this map. And now all you need if your opponent is going for scouts is a couple spears at home. You can tell that Baba Rum has played this map many times before. He even built houses here along the shoreline for vision. But actually really like to see Town Watch. So this is, this is something that I think... I wouldn't hate it if they changed it. So you cannot attack through an enemy dock, but they can attack through their dock. So if there was a fire here attacking this fire, blue's fire would do no damage, but red's fire would. It's really weird, um, but it's actually really smart for Baba Rum then to position his ships like this in the choke point. Fire has come over here already, and Sebastian's got to be feeling like, huh? How is he on my pond? And then he's here as well, and there's our first fishing ship kill. Like we mentioned before, it's tough for Sebastian to be able to... It was tough for him to be able to afford the first and second fire because he wasn't on gold. However, because of that other fire being produced by Baba, he didn't actually have the one here. And that could be bad. And Sebastian blocks the choke point. And that Vil's going to die then. Yep, that Vil's going to die. And what? Wait, what? Huh? What? This is what I mean. The docks are really weird. Huh? She's safe? Huh? <laughs> oh, wait. He's clicked the palisade. He's, he's given up. He's just clicked the palisade. I don't think he's trying to. I don't understand. Oh, wait. Now she's getting hit. Now she's getting hit. Don't change anything. Boom. Villager's dead. Okay, wow. Meanwhile, there were scouts dying over here. Man, like... This is so good, right? Obviously, to be here. 
But to have such a lead in the production of fires with one dock versus one dock and then fall behind here really must hurt here for Baba because this is more important. They're, this is where the fishing ships are. 6 to 3 KD for Sebastian, who absolutely... Um, it was favored to win this series, right? And it's, it's probably feeling much better based on how things have played right now. We do have the walls here for Baba, who's adding some scouts. Sebastian has more scouts on the field, though. We'll track this the whole way through. Sees it, and is transitioned towards farms. Now, that's the thing about this map we don't talk about. They're fishing, but you also need to farm. You see how there's no farms here for Baba? He's going to rely more on the fish long term than anything, then. Another dock from him as he wants to go for the TPD, the Triple Pond Domination. And there's the pond in the north. I don't know if that's domination yet, but he does have three ponds then. He'll use, sell some of the stone, buy some food, look to click up here towards castle. Sebastian has done a better job transitioning his eco towards farms. He does a few fishing ships, but he has doesn't have that crazy fish eco. And then always remember, like, these fire galleys are going to add to the score. It's going to add to the military count. But these fire galleys basically do nothing for Sebastian now. But he does need something here. And he's got it. And I think, actually, there was a demo. Must have been a demo there from Sebastian. And one dock against two here. He's actually taking good fights. And Baba Rami just can't keep up with it. Just not able to keep up with it. Like, he realizes he loses another unit there. Sebastian just always seems to be a little bit more efficient with the fights. We did have a quick wall here. It's very likely that this quick wall was happening when the fire galley was going down. And now Sebastian quick walls in his villager. What? Excuse me? Nice save. 3 to 1 eco KD for Sebastian. He actually came over here and killed the dock villager as well. It's like, every time I'm looking... Sebastian is amazing micro. Even there, he dodges from the demos. It's actually a really nice demo micro. That could have led to three or four ships going down. Sebastian's playing like a maniac. His resources collected. Almost a thousand more than Baba. Castle age time will be similar. And now, of course, this, this villager being up here tells Sebastian that he could maybe send a villager there if he needs to, to... Uh, and test the pond. But honestly, at this point, I think just TCs is probably fine. Um, you know, trying to compete for this pond is good. Both players have invested here, but I think adding land eco is really important here. Baba Rum, I think, is realizing he's behind. And so he sell sold off his stone, and he's going to try and go all in here. War Galley upgrade. What you do here is you hop out with one fire to group up all the other fires, and then you hope that you demo the group. Scouts and camels around to defend that TC position for Sebastian. He drops a monastery for some monks. This would be the time for Baba to come back on this pond. Can you use one fire in the middle of the group, if you can pay attention to this. But he's looking at this. Quick walls from Sebastian. Doesn't get them down. Camels lured out of position. Nice attack from Baba. The demo also landed at the same time. He needed that. It all worked out for him. And he delayed that TC. Took a very nice fight. The TC will still go up, though. He didn't kill that much. And obviously, no fish here to kill. He will just have to add fishing ships here. And then it'll feel worth it. And he actually bought some stone back. He's going to drop TC number two. Again, look at the farming situation here. Three farms... Sebastian's got 10 farms and getting horse collar. So I had someone ask, I had a lot of people ask me, what is the difference between cross and four lakes? And um, I, I gave an answer. So if you've heard that, it's going to be similar. But I actually double checked that too, because the versions of four lakes have kind of changed at times throughout ranked. So they must have added a lot more fish to four lakes recently. Uh, there's way more fish on four lakes than I remembered. So yeah, cross is four lakes with maybe like half the fish or something. Like on four lakes, you can just get by with one pond for a long time. This is the type of thing on cross that you really need. You can't lose your fish, right? Having your fish is still helpful, but eventually you need to have that balance towards the land eco too. 
Uh, four lakes, you just simply don't need that quite as much. It looks like this villager's gone down. Is Golden Swamp just Cup? Golden Swamp was introduced after Cup. They definitely came up with the idea because of Cup, though they never talked to me about it, but I'm pretty sure Golden Swamp was probably a Cup-inspired map because of the timing of it. <laughs> just like Four Lakes was a Cross-inspired map. Camels don't really kill villagers all that well. I mean, they will if there's no resistance, but it's not really the best raiding unit here. Especially when there's a couple spearmen and monks around. So Sebastian's forced away. Two TCs here. Blacksmith now for Sebastian for upgrades, but also maybe because he wants to siege push this hill. Look at the amount of monks for Sebastian here. Scout goes in. Uphill. Scout doesn't get the kill. Monk's still around, but Monk stopped trying to get a conversion. And, dude, there's just so many Monks going in for conversions here. Someone get Devotion, fast! <laughs> also, Light Cap could be really good. Persian Monks are really weak. They don't get Sanctity, but they still can get conversions like this. And Sebastian's going to be happy with some of these conversions. Both players lose units. Sebastian losing some monks here too, but he has the control in this game. And he has a thousand more resources collected. And this is before he's starting to mount the siege push here. It's just really, like, it's unfortunate because Baba's had such a good run, but, like, Sebastian is playing unreal. Those two vills that were converted were going to be converted back, and he deleted them. Like, Sebastian just gives this guy no time. Three mangonels in queue now. And more monks on the way forward. Malians do get redemption. So monks are actually your savior here. But I'm noticing he doesn't actually have that much on gold at the moment. He seems to be transitioning towards stone for a castle. I don't think redemption is going to be possible for him with these resources. Unless he sells some of that off. And no sanctity even means the siege is a really big problem as we have another stable... Now, on paper, against Monks, you want to go Light Calf. Against Monks Siege, Light Calf is perfect, but when there's Camels there, you can't really expect to get in close. And Sebastian just all over him again. It is just so much speed, and, and his eco is flying, guys. Res Collected's even got higher now behind this. He's not forgetting upgrades. He doesn't really need upgrades on his military. There's just so much confidence for Sebastian right now. Siege has been forgotten about. Siege is starting to go down. That will stall out the push. That was sloppy. Monks here, left alone, loses one. Will lose two. But he does get a conversion there, and Baba Ram doesn't have the army to compete. Still, though, if Baba could build a castle now and, and secure the map, this could be really nice. Sebastian is building an outpost with that villager in his opponent's base. Traitor! How dare you! <laughs> Reveal our secrets. <laughs> Sebastian's gonna go imp? What? Honestly, the, he's playing Unreal. This is an Unreal level. This is unbelievable. I mean, believable with how good he is in some ways, but also playing above the level I even know that he's capable of. This is insane. We could have an imp into forward castle situation here soon. Always paying attention to his army. Getting a few more conversions. He didn't go for any upgrades on his units, guys. Like, that's the crazy thing, is he's taking good fights. He has no... He doesn't have a single upgrade on his camels. He just always has the numbers of them. And he always has enough healing and enough conversions nearby. Still don't know what he's going to do in Imp. Right? Imp normally leads to upgrades, which he doesn't have any of. Imp could lead to Trebs, and he doesn't have a forward castle yet. So, Sebastian's been able to, to push a bit, but he hasn't finished Baba Rum. Baba Rum drops the castle. Baba Rum on three town centers. But that one minute and 19 seconds of TC idle time stat is wild to me. That is obviously not completely flawless, but that is a ridiculous stat to have on a map where he's had to focus so much on some of these other pawns. But then again, I mean, he did lose this pond, and he's only had to look here, so maybe that's been part of it. I 
think husbandry's also been in. And, oh, actually, camels are just faster than the knights, right? So, castle's going up for Sebastian. Does he have a university? Is this chemistry? Looks like it might be chemistry. Chemistry's on the way. And Baba Rum's gonna look at this and be like, what? How is he imp? Because that's kind of what I'm thinking. It's pretty ridiculous, man. Another TC here for Baba who wants to stay alive. All four... Well, not all four relics, because there's five on the map, but four of the five relics have been collected. Treb can come out to just Treb down this castle. Bombard Cannon can come out as a follow-up. Heavy Camel upgrade on the way here for Sebastian. He's got more than enough camels to take this fight, and he always has monks to maybe get some conversions, even though Persian monks are pretty trash. This dude's playing insane, man. And he, he deserves to be... Assuming he, you know, continues this shape, and Babaram can't turn it around in this series. Sebastian has had such a good year or two. He deserves to be an event like Hidden Cup. It's really exciting for the scene to have someone like him have his hard work pay off. I know he's been training like a madman. And he's young, right? 22. Has been playing for quite a few years now, but... Has always just been like just close like so close and yet so far from qualifying for big events his level's ridiculous right now look at this gets through builds some gates and walls traps that meanwhile trebs on the front has enough army to protect here and he's already going for that castle yeah he is younger than the game itself <laughs> which is true and i think he would be yeah we do not have anyone under the age of 22 already in the event, right? I think Leary's 23? 24? 25? Leary's 20... Dude, I don't even know. I, I know 22 is... <laughs> Leary is not still 16. <laughs> he is not still 16. Yeah, I think he's 23 or 24. Something like that. I remember when Leary was 16. I was also much younger than I am now. I like this from Baba Ram just to try and use the navy in some way. Well, the problem here is... Gebetto is the is a great unit for the Malians against the Camels. But Sebastian's already on hand cannons here. Leary's 22. Can you guys Liquipedia it? And we can find out who's younger between Sebastian and Leary. Also, shout out to this Camel, which won't be upgraded to a heavy Camel. Am I crazy? I thought there was one. There's one special one in there. Yeah, that guy. He's not heavy. That is a light camel. Ooh, big fight here as I was being stupid. Not a bad fight for Baba, but has to be careful. There's gunpowder here. Monks, though, for Sebastian. First misplay he's made with his monks. That's relatable. First time he's been relatable with monks in this series. And Trebs took down the castle. 39,000 resources collected from Sebastian. It is 32,000 for Baba Rum. Crazy stuff. I think Gebetto Camel is one of the best comps that you could have as the Malians. Gunpowder Camel for the Persians, though, should be really strong against that. Sebastian was born February of 2002. Okay, so who's who's younger? God, Leary's been around for so long. It's hard to believe that he's the same age as Sebastian. <laughs> Just because Leary's been so good for so long. He feels like an old man, like the rest of us. And Trebs just roll right up to the hill here. These are heavy camels. And a lot of them here for Sebastian. And there's gunpowder everywhere. The TCs are going to start to go down. And I'm fearing for Baba Rum. He will too. There will be more games in this series. This is a best of seven, but it's got to be hard to have any belief if Sebastian is playing this well. Sebastian is playing insane. Babarum is not playing poorly. Maybe game two, he had a misread, but Sebastian is just on another level here, and the GG's called. 3-0. Sebastian now one win away from joining the Hidden Cup 5 main event. And again, if he does it, if he makes it to the main event, I don't want to jinx him here. It will be an exciting addition because he is so freaking good. And he's 
got technical micro. He's very fast. The strategic side will be interesting too, but like I could see someone guessing Vinchester, maybe occasionally guessing Leary, something along those lines when they see Sebastian play. And, the, you know, the more skilled players in the main event, obviously the better the games will be. And the main event quality is going to be insane, right? There's the uh, KD there for Sebastian. Well played to him. I mean, the guy is just an animal right now. <laughs> He's playing with confidence. His, his speed, it, it's, it's clear to me that he simply is way faster, and the strategy's there too. So, uh, not really sure what more you can say about the guy staring at that 3-0 scoreline. Um, ooh, Sebastian changed his color coming into this game. That's interesting, because he's one win away from making it to the main event. And we do have another player who will be in the main event who is known for changing his colors from game to game. Hmm. Anyways, getting ahead of myself, welcome to game four. Has not been the series that Baba Rum wanted. He's down three games. Sebastian's playing like an animal. And we've got the Armenians versus the Italians. Now, Armenians are top three on bans in the drafts. They've been banned a lot. And I'm pretty certain they have been banned because of their water play. The players have not wanted to face up against Armenians. That tells me they think Armenians is number one. I spoke to Mark Gugu. I spoke to, well, many players. Uh, I constantly am. And yeah, players basically are like, yep, Armenians are number one. And they're they're just busted. So I think the big reason they seem to think they're busted is because of their naval tech tree, but also uh, their mule cart upgrades. The mule cart upgrades are 40% more effective. And the mule cart upgrades wood. And the mule cart upgrades gold. And so the, the wood and the gold is what you need for Navy, right? So that inherently plays directly towards island play. But then also they have a crazy unique tech later. They're, I think their galleys fire extra arrows. Their, um, their fortified churches give them an extra relic. I mean, there's just so many bonuses that feel so smooth with the Armenians. So see how things flow. Now, I explained to Margugu that I think the Italians are... It's easier to play. Now, Armenians, of course, have great bonuses that you don't really have to work hard for, but... Cheap fishing ships, cheap dock techs, cheaper up to each age, and then an awesome naval tech tree makes them, in my opinion, number two on water. If I had to rank them, I would say Armenians number one, Italians number two. Um, I might say Dravidians three, Vikings four, but Vikings have actually looked really, 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 really good and way better than I thought. So maybe Vikings three, Vikings two. I, ugh, I don't know. <laughs> the true answer is it depends. But I would rank all the sieves I just mentioned above Portuguese. And I think the picks and the bands and everything on the draft has also uh, mean that a lot of players agree with me. Portuguese are really solid too, though. And uh, I don't know if we'll see them more or less in the main event. But So what I would do, like, the Armenian galleys are really strong. And if you give the... If you give Sebastian, of all people, the chance to just boom behind galleys, he's going to micro you down. And he's going to kind of embarrass you like he already has been doing. So, instead, my suggestion would be go landing. And Baba Rum has gone landing before. I expect it here. And I think we are going to see two to three fishing ships on the back. A transport ship from Baba Rum. You're down 3-0. At least give the people some craziness. And who knows? Maybe uh, you, you, you get the better of Sebastian here. Maybe it gets under Sebastian's skin. Maybe it affects his performance. And maybe you start the crazy reverse sweep here. Obviously, you just have to take it one game at a time here, though. So, um, Okay, a couple shout-outs. Uh, well, shout-out to everyone I've missed over the past 48 hours. Um, these have been long days, and I'm casting all the time. So, sorry about that, but also the people I'll be able to announce. Thank you, uh, Meglin, who's a big Baba fan. Thank you, Doc Deagle. Says, can we have a hidden cup every month? Uh, no. <laughs> I think, um, that would... I think all good things need to be spaced properly, right? Otherwise, you'd get tired of them very quickly. Says the guy who uploads a video to YouTube every single day and streams all the... Anyways, um, thank you, Prezmu, for the 28 months. Thank you, Joblo, for 19 months. Thank you, Killer Boo, for the gifted subs, which I think I thanked you about. But, uh... I may have missed. Anyways. Uh, Giovanni, thank you. Ronzu, welcome back. 
says, didn't know you were back on Twitch. Kappa, yep, I've been back. I think you're joking. Thank you, Bayavar, Toasty, uh, Shuniski, uh, Constanio, Apogee, welcome back. Grizz, Ilmbrick, Space Pirate, and Fingolfin. I think we're all caught up. Thank you, everybody. The, uh, the sub count has been flying. It's been motivating. All right, where's the transport, Baba? I don't think this is a transport, actually, because you would need to have this transport being produced already. And he instead... Is this just a really, 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 really fast, fast castle? I think this is an attempt at a fast castle. He may not be able to actually pull this off here. I think he's going to have to sell his stone even. And even then, I mean, you need a lot more food than this. He does have Lumen Q as well, which could just be because of the potential landing from the opponent. But yeah, double dock here from Sebastian. I'd be shocked if he doesn't go for galleys here. And this is not Fast Castle for him. But I'm just not seeing the resources there yet for Baba. I think if I were to give you an island strategy with the Italians, this is what I would suggest. I would say, go back dock, add four to five fish, go fast castle, into a forward dock or two, upgraded fire galleys, and go kill all the opponents fishing castle. From there, you drop town centers, you boom. That is a play that more often than not is going to bring you a lot of success with the Italians. And that's essentially what he's trying to do here. But I just think he, he maybe needed an extra villager or two slightly miscalculated this and yeah he sells the stone with the market still barely has the resources to do it but he's on his way making a fire galley on the back we'll make a dock on the front and yeah that's pretty much the strategy we've seen this strategy dominate we've also seen this strategy lose many times if you lose control hmm three dock galleys from armenians now, you want your fishing ships to survive as long as possible, obviously. But this fire can maybe hold against normal galleys. The double galley fire against two galleys should be insane. They're firing two bolts. And soon it's going to be five and six and seven and eight. I also wonder how the Armenian galleys do in Feudal Age against upgraded fire ships in Castle. This shift's this shift seems so strong. This is before we talk about the eco. Again, like the wood and the gold is way more efficient. And uh, I didn't show you, but I'm 95% certain he researched the gold upgrade as well. Everyone's doing it with Armenians right now. It just didn't. It doesn't have an area in capture age to show. Fishing ships are fleeing, which is smart thinking. You also need to conserve your fires now. <laughs> Look at how at the limit the resources are for Baba here. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, the dock decks are cheaper, so you should be able to get it. But really at the limit with this build order. And now we are going to see fires from Sebastian to put in front of his galleys, which is a smart move. Does have a lot of wood right now, which he'll need to spend in some way. And does need to be careful at home. Now, I like the fire addition because... You already have enough galleys to do what you want to do. Uh, a Feudal Age Fire does a much better job at holding against a Castle Age Fire than the Feudal Age Galley will. The Feudal Age Galleys, you need so many numbers. And it just it makes your life a little bit easier to have this backup here. Looks like this fire is looping around now. Baba into the darkness. Looking, maybe expecting a back dock. Looked on the front, doesn't see this. Right now, he's trying to save his fish, and Sebastian, who looped all the way around, finds the kills. So there's been three fishing ships killed. But still no uh, Castle Age for Sebastian. He's going to click up here shortly. Res collected will be extremely high for him, but the second TC is here for Baba. This is textbook. This is What's interesting about this build is that I thought this build was unbreakable, and now the more I see it, people are figuring it out, guys. We've seen Vikings beat it with longboats. Um, Dravidians beat it. With actually playing a very similar style, but... 
it is a really good build because basically this is still likely going to go to the imperial age and the idea is you kill their fish which of course hasn't happened here which is unfortunate and then you are on tc's faster than them that's the thinking uh cmd sebastian is from uruguay i think that is very close to the greece flag though Okay, so you see how little the galleys do at this stage. Obviously, having them later on will be very strong, though. And Sebastian is held. Seven kills, one death. Mike rooted the fishing ship there just to block off the fire. Defended his fish on his way up, 50 seconds away. Boom! Big demo, though. Abaram will like that. Nice micro. And we'll see if Sebastian's going to be able to catch up in the villager count because he will fall behind there. With the two TCs behind this for Baba Rum. Ducks is from Greece. Is that is the Greece flag not similar? Am I wrong? Sorry. I'm sure you're shocked that my knowledge of flags is on par with my knowledge of geography. I thought it was similar. Flag is very similar. Yeah, it's very similar. Thank you, chat. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Chad having my back. Let's go. Second TC going up here for Sebastian. Rez collected. He has collected 9,000 resources. And his opponent has collected 7,000 resources. See, that is not just the fishing ships, guys. That is Armenians. And it also is really nice eco balance. The mule carts. The efficiency of the mule carts. And then you make a monastery. Or fortified church and you get a relic right away and you have a fortified priest or fortified priest you have a um what what the crap they call a warrior priest that's cheaper than a, uh, a monk i almost said cheaper than a relic i'm really dying over here and you can actually pick up these relics and with this map control in theory you could also transport go out and take these relics fortified priest will be in the next dlc guys <laughs> We already got monaster. We got monks that attack. We got monasteries that give you free relics and you can garrison into. I know some people are more used to this now, but a fortified priest feels like it'll come in the next DLC. Hopefully not, of course. I'm I'm kidding, devs. Please don't do that. Sebastian is just playing perfectly, guys. I mean, Armenians are strong, but he is just playing perfectly today. He's playing so good against a player. Who upset Mikov against a player who who upset um, Kingston against a player who's had a crazy run? But I'm just not seeing a way but to win this game with how if you're Baba Rum because of how good Sebastian's playing. Like it is just every game he has just been a tier above every single one, and you know some of it's maybe the sieve. Armenians were banned a lot, so it could be that, but we've seen this strategy that Baba Rum's doing win many times, and it has not looked good. And he's going to try and redock to come back on water, and every time he does that, he will be found, because Sebastian is just patrolling on the shoreline everywhere. And Sebastian doing the small things. Look, he's getting the relics from the neutral islands just in case he loses water control later on. Makes me happy because I envisioned this for the map, by the way. This was the thought. It's give the players who have water control a greater edge. And more often than not, the player who gets these relics and has these neutral islands is going to be in the better position. Dang. Docks. I mean, how are you supposed to sneak a dock up? Sebastian is patrolling everywhere. Look at this. Actually, that, that can't show you. Uh, th this is Sebastian's point of view. He's looking everywhere. Looking all around. Behind this, his economy is solid. University for him, maybe for ballistics. He'll end up having five relics. He could actually take this relic if he wanted to from Baba Rum's island. A monk goes down for Baba Rum. That's just unlucky. It probably passed this way when he wanted to get this relic. Continues to try and find dock spots, but Sebastian's patrols are perfect, dude. He usually, like... Usually players are able to sneak up some docks, but he's everywhere. <laughs> this has been... Uh, this, I mean, this this whole series 
has just been another example of why people have been so excited about Sebastian. Every type of map, Arabia, Slopes, Islands, Cross. There's so many players that are only good on land maps, or at least that used to be the case with some of these next-gen guys. They'd only be good on something like Arabia. The practice, guys. Having $10,000 in the qualifier has certainly helped. But everybody has been practicing. The level is so, so high here. And there we go again. Snagging the relics directly into the transport. Directly back home. <laughs> I like how the monk walked back here <laughs> to get into the transport ship. Yep, he's up to imp. He's adding more docks. He's adding war galleys. He's getting upgrades to add range to the war galleys. To be up faster than the Italians is also insane. And yeah, this is... I think Baba Rum will call it when he sees Imperial Age, if not before. No one wants to be dominated like this. No one also wants to resign too early. And, uh, you know, like this would mean that the series is over. This would mean that Baba's not going to be in Hidden Cup 5 yet. This does send him to a uh, series tomorrow, which I'll tell you guys about, which I think is the silver lining here for Baba. But yeah, this is just, this is just, the series has not been close. Some of the games have been great, but Sebastian, I'm trying to remember, did he lose a game, guys? Can someone look at Liquipedia and tell me, did he lose a game? I don't think he lost a game the entire qualifier. He will have gone 3-0. 3-0, 3-0, That's crazy. Has not lost a game. Sick. Even Tas Tato lost a game. Tato lost a game to Seed 96, and I'm sure he loves the fact to keep bringing it up. But it happened. That's wild. Well, Imp is going to come in. Sebastian keeps trying to lure this monk close enough where he can kill it. <laughs> and he gets the kill. Oh, man. Shipwright right away. That's another textbook thing. If you have the lead, you need to get Shipwright. It saves so much on your ships for the long run. Baba Ram not ready to call it quits. He wants to hand Sebastian his first loss here. That gold spot is really brutal, actually. I didn't realize that. More docks now. That's what the castle will do. Um, I think the next step for the Armenians would be the Cilician fleet upgrade. Oh, this is funny. He's brought villagers and the mule cart. Why invest into a mule co a new mule cart, a new a new cart, a mule cart when you can just bring one over in the transport ship? Dang. He's going to build the castle there. Yeah. So he knows about that. He's going to build the castle here. Make trebs. I don't actually know if he can range this. Hmm. Someone says all quality games are stomps. Well, you probably haven't been paying attention to the qualifier then. We've had some insanely close sets, and we've had some crazy upsets that have never happened before. Today, though, it definitely has been the day of the favorites. Can't disagree with you there. Dramans on the way. This Civ gets Draman as well? I didn't know they got Dramans. I forgot about that. Oh, shoot, dude. Yeah, so Draman is really strong. I think only five civilizations get it. Byzantines, Huns, Goths, actually. I guess Armenians, and then... They're, they're, I, I might be missing one here. Anyways, it's incredibly strong. And it is like a Cannon Galleon and a Mangonel combined, basically. So it is better against units. I think it may be slightly worse against buildings, but it's still pretty strong against buildings. Oh, the Romans get it as well? Okay. Yeah, I felt and the, the other thing is I don't think you need chemistry to unlock this, which is what makes it strong compared to a cannon galleon, but drama and information is not important. What is important is that Sebastian went undefeated in this entire cutthroat qualifier, and Sebastian Foros moves in then to the main event of Hidden Cup. Congratulations to Sebastian. Again, with most recent LAN event NAC5 happening, he was one win away from making it. It was a heartbreaking loss for him. I was worried for him that maybe there'd be an upset in the early rounds. He wouldn't make it here either because the first few rounds, there was some crazy competition.
and well deserved. What a beast. Sebastian is joining the main event players of Hidden Cup 5. Now, for Baba Rum and that storyline that everyone wants to get excited about, he does have a backup qualifier tomorrow. We have uh we have 13 names now qualified for the main event. So let's talk about that. And then let's talk about the final three sets in this qualifier because Baba Ram still has a chance as with everybody who lost over the last two days, okay? Um, let me just bring up the image that has everybody and then we'll talk about the sets. But I think tomorrow, so yesterday was nine hours. Today was only seven and a half with pretty much nonstop games. I think tomorrow is like a 10 or 11 hour day. I think it'll be insane. Because there were a mix of players who maybe couldn't show their all today. But also players who really did show their all against really, really big talented names. And understandably lost. We'll talk about it, but here's our qualified players from the main event. So... Obviously, with the seven invites and then everyone who's qualified now, we have 13 names. We have ACCM. We have Doubt, Hera, Jordan, Leary, Yo, Viper, Vinchester, Sato, MBL, Tato, Barles, and then Sebastian. Also, the red flag rule has been broken. Sebastian is the first flag that does not have red in it. <laughs> Very important. <laughs> but no, that's huge. That's huge for Sebastian. That's big for his career. And I think, guys, if he plays like that, he can beat people in the main event, absolutely. And he also could have people being very confused and being like, thinking that that is a greater name, perhaps, right? I could see people confusing him with Vinchester or Leary. Um, or depending on the level of dominance, maybe someone like Hera and his, or Sato, um, depending on styles, of course. So, so there is that. Um... We have three more places to determine. And that is going to be determined by the sets tomorrow, which I'm going to bring up just on Liquipedia here. Um, obviously, guys, this is going to have spoilers for the results that happened earlier today. But I also did spoil the results that happened earlier today because their names were on the sheet. So the last thing I want you to say is spoilers because it's kind of obvious, right? Um, so the sets tomorrow... And this is not the order we're broadcasting them, but this is this is the order that, you know, these are the three sets that are played. Um, are here, as everyone's saying spoilers. Thank you, chat. We have Sebastian against Hart. Wait, that's wrong. Okay, which Frenchman is controlling Liquipedia? Hey, France, what are you trying to do here, Okay. You already got Sato in the main event. This is incorrect. Okay, this page just got updated. Hold on. Somebody screwed up. That's not that's not right. Okay, there we go. Yeah. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Okay. So, the correct result here is uh Baba Rum against Hart. Um that should be wild. Hart's the favorite in my opinion. So it could be a heartbreaker for well, Baba Rum. Um Hart against Tato today. Struggled. Couldn't really, couldn't really get into it. Same with Baba Rum. Both players failed to get a victory. So that should be a banger. Sobek against Mihai should also be a banger. I think Mihai's my favorite there. I think the level that he brought against Vinchester was extremely high. It was very consistent. Vinchester was like peak Vinchester in that series. So I'm leaning towards Mihai there. And then Ganji against Stark. I think Ganji against Stark is going to be the set of the day. Um, like Ganji, I think his brain got melted by MBL a little bit and he always had in the back of his mind, I have the backup qualifier and it affected him. He can bring some crazy games. He beat Veleza in that qualifying bracket. Remember? So he, he is a big level he can bring and Stark today, Stark today, like dude, the scoreline did not actually represent the series between Stark and Barros and Barros is a monster. Stark was hard to kill. I think every single game went to the Imperial Age. There was one or two games in that set that could have gone Stark's direction. So yeah, I know. Like, yeah, Stark's a little bit slower. Ganji's got this crazy play. I actually think it is harder to choose a favorite between Ganji and Stark than it is for Sobek and Mihai and Baba Ram and Hart. But um, yeah, so that, anyways, that's my thought. What do you guys think? <laughs> what, what do you guys think? I, I think it'll be a closer day than today because... 
naturally these players should be closer level. And then we'll have three more players joining the main event. So 